This is the Nikon D810. Here are the basics. It is a full frame DSLR body. It is among the best in class in resolution with 36 megapixels. Let me make one thing clear right off the bat though. Here is the Nikon D800 and here is the Nikon D810. The D810 is an update. It's not a whole new game-changing camera or anything like that. Nikon changed the second digit in the name, not the first. So that gives us an idea of what they're after. And they didn't jump to 850 or anything like that. This is an incremental update, but it's a good one. If you're new to the D800 and D810, you can watch my D800 review to get a foundation of what this platform is all about. In this video, I'll give you a bit of background on the D810 and then focus on some of the outstanding new features on it and who this camera might be good for. And then I'll share lots of photos that I've taken in my experience with it. The D810 is Nikon's current resolution and sharpness king. One of the distinguishing characteristics of the D810 is the absence of an optical low pass filter. Also, the first shutter curtain is electronic, so no low-pass filter to interfere with image sharpness and fewer moving parts when you click here. What I like about this is that Nikon is closely examining all of the elements that get between your eyes and the image, and then making small tweaks and changes to get you the best image possible. That is evolution rather than revolution, but the sum of those revisions can really make a difference. Now let's click the shutter release button. Now the D800. Now D810 again. That's a big difference. The D810 is a much quieter camera, even in regular shooting mode. That's a big deal to me, whether I'm shooting with a lot of people around or if I'm shooting wildlife and want the creatures and critters minimally distracted by me. The D810 has the ability to shoot in raw small. This isn't something that I'd use, but for those of you who think that raw files from the D810 are too big, this is an option. These files are 12-bit RAW, half the resolution, and one quarter the size of the D810's regular full resolution RAW files. Storage is cheap, and I have no qualms about shooting the D810 in full-size 14-bit lossless compressed RAW. The D810 has a new metering mode, Highlight Weighted Metering. Pretty incredible. It aims to weight the highlights more heavily when calculating exposure. This is exciting to me, and it's something that I use quite often in challenging lighting around sunrise and sunset. The D810 has an expanded ISO range. It can natively go from ISO 64 all the way up to 12,800. Then there are the expanded settings of low 1 and high 1 and 2, which is the equivalent to 51,200. That's a lot, and I was really impressed by the usability of the high ISO images. Now, not everyone utilizes the video capabilities of their DSLRs because most DSLRs are not quite usable enough for taking a quick video of your kid's soccer game or your cat doing something funny. Basically, autofocus still hunts and is often noisy. That being said, with the D810, Nikon has made a commitment to video, so I'm going to touch on the video and video-related features. The in-camera microphone on the D810 is improved. In-camera microphones are never anything to write home about, but this one is stereo and can actually be used for okay results if you're out in the field without any external audio equipment. The D810 can shoot video at 1080p with 60 frames per second. You can go 30p and 24p as well, though. Zebra stripes are also an option here. That is where you can see highlights on the LCD screen while shooting video. A handy feature. Nikon also added the flat picture control. This is great for video to get the most color information into the video file so that you can do the color grading when processing later on. Now for the really important question. Who would the D810 be good for? The D810 is geared toward users familiar with the control scheme of higher-end Nikons, like the D2, D3, and D4 series, the D700, and even the D300 and 200. This camera thrives out in the field for landscapes and nature, and it loves the studio and is not shy about focusing and capturing great low noise images in low light. When it comes to sports, you can add the optional grip and go up to 7 frames per second in DX mode. This is not a sports camera, but when needed, it can hold its own. Also, if you're looking for something to hang off your shoulder for a full day of hiking, it is definitely something that you can take with you, and I have, but it's a mid to large sized DSLR. So when size and weight matter, I usually bring a smaller camera with me. Now let's talk about the most important aspect of any camera, you. Not the camera itself, you. Does it help me do photography the way I want and how I want to do it? Does it get in the way or does it remove distraction between me and the image? After all, cameras are a tool. They don't compose the image or find that perfect moment to capture it. They don't wake up before dawn and drive themselves to that great spot. That's all about you. 
No matter if you grab something like this or like this to head out into the world around you, you can capture great images with any camera. The D810 will allow you to capture images without distraction because you can customize its many buttons and dials. It will weather that snowstorm better than lower end bodies. And it will allow you to create sharp, saturated 36 megapixel masterpieces for blowing up to the size of Texas. <laughs> but like I said, if you don't get out there, it'll gather dust on your shelf just as well as any other camera. Here are just a few of the places and things that I've experienced with the D810. We've experimented in the studio with crisp and clean black and white portraits. We've been around Arizona for so many sunrises and sunsets, hikes, and even indoor adventures. We've taken the show on the road to Lake Tahoe, Nevada, and to Seattle, Washington. And I've been using the D810 for video in the studio since I got it, but I've also played around with it in various other situations, like outside for a little action and inside for a close-up shot. Me and my buddy, the D810, haven't gone everywhere yet, but this little guy and I are planning to go plenty more places. It's a no-compromise solution for taking a camera into the big world out there. I can grab any one of my Nikon lenses to go along with it, and the results have impressed me each and every time. We can talk about zebra stripes, trick new modes, and fancy shutters, but the proof is in the image, and the D810 takes its lead from me and then delivers the results that I want. I can't ask for any more than that.